Good morning. I would like to um, expand on something we discussed yesterday uh, in a, really a watershed moment in Jewish history where the Jewish people returned from their Babylonian exile the first after the first temple was destroyed and many of the tribes, the Jewish tribes, went into exile and Ezra the scribe um, encourages Jews to go back to Israel and, and uh, at this point uh, there's a lot of assimilation, the Jews are uneducated, and it's Rosh Hashanah, and suddenly there's an awareness that it's a very special day. And they're gathered by Nehemiah, who was uh, a religious leader, also the governor, and Ezra the scribe, and the Levites, and everyone is all of a sudden overcome with the sense of guilt, and they're weeping, and there are these famous words, which the Rebbe quoted many times, that they're told, uh, Go home uh, and eat sweet food and, and sweet drinks and celebrate and be happy. Because joy in God is your strength. Joy is strength. This is what we discussed yesterday and I want to expand on this a little bit. Um, this is, at first glance, this would seem a little unusual or a little bit odd because it makes sense that people are frightened that it's, it's Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is, is a day of judgment. The whole world is in judgment. It's an awesome time. It's a day which evokes feelings of trepidation. So the people are, are feeling, uh, are, are aware of this all of a sudden. Why, why are they told to be happy and to have the sense of happiness and go home and celebrate? Uh, we don't. We do not recite the Hallel on the on the day of uh, Rosh Hashanah or on Yom Kippur, because it would seem a little tone deaf to start praising God when we're all standing in judgment. So, what's this about? So, allow me to tell two stories, which will uh, which will help us understand this concept. One of them takes place in a courtroom in Brooklyn, and the other story takes place in a courtroom in heaven. So, uh, years ago, when I was a yeshiva student, I had jury duty uh, in front of a uh, judge in Brooklyn, and his name was Abraham Gurgis. So, I have a friend uh, who has been, uh, he's an assistant DA in Brooklyn, been working there for many years, uh, and I bumped into him in shul uh, in the synagogue, and I asked him, do you, do you happen to know Abraham, the judge Abraham Gurgis? He says, of course, I argued in front of him many times. And he told me the following story. So he says that um, as an assistant DA, he's arguing in front of the judge here. There was a certain person, a certain individual who committed a crime. I believe it was, uh, it may have been something drug related. Anyway, so he says, when, when you argue in front of a judge for that long, you begin to, uh, you have a, something of a rapport. And sometimes things happen that your average person wouldn't think would happen. He says, Abraham Gurgis, who was a, was a super liberal judge, he says, he calls me up and he tells me, he says, uh, Shlaimi, I just want to tell you that uh, it doesn't really make a difference what you argue because I'm going to let this guy go. Okay, so I'm going to let this guy walk. Uh, he had a troubled youth. You have to understand where this guy's coming from. And you just, so it doesn't make really make much of a difference what you say. So anyway, so fine. Sh Shlaimi prepared his case. And uh, an airtight case, and he really did his homework, and, and he did he was doing this well. So he's arguing the case in front of the judge, and really went out of his way to show that this person should be in trouble and should pay for his crime. At some point, um, the judge calls over uh, Shlaimi and he tells him, he says, "Didn't we? He says, didn't I tell you that uh, that this guy's going to walk, and you're wasting your time?" So Shlomi tells him, he says, Your Honor, I'm not really, the words that I'm saying is not for you. I'm just, this, what I'm talking about is just to prepare my case for the appellate court when we, when we reappeal. So uh, the judge got very upset and he spoke Yiddish. He's old, old world uh, judge and he screamed in Yiddish, Gestrasha Devansen. Gestrasha Devansen is an expression um, that, uh, actually, similar, two similar expressions in Yiddish. Um, Gestrasha de Gens in Yiddish, which means go, go threaten the geese. That's the way of saying I don't care. 
Um, Gates and Asher Devansin is go threaten the bed bugs. It's a similar expression. So uh, Shlemi got this because he speaks Yiddish. But the stenographer looks up like, what's this? He says, nah, don't worry about it, it's Latin. So that's story number one. Story number two is a story which doesn't take place in a, uh, in a court in Brooklyn, but rather in the court in heaven. So there was a great Hasidic master, his name was Rabbi Levi Yitzchak of Bardichev. You know, you talk about the day of judgment, we need a good lawyer. And a good lawyer isn't necessarily only someone who knows law, but someone who cares. And the great Sadiq, Rabbi Levi Yitzchak of Bardichev, is famous for loving all Jewish people um, in, in a sense that he would, he would, he couldn't see anything wrong with anything that anyone would do wrong. And uh, he was a very spiritual person. He was a Hasidic master. And uh, when he would pray, his congregation realized that he was ha having something of a dialogue with God. And so one year he was he was uh, praying, and he uh, and he recited a uh, he came to a verse in the Shacharit prayer. Part of the liturgy, Lekel Erech Din, to God who arranges judgment. And um, all of a sudden he stops, and everyone sees that he that he his face loses color. It looks like he's about to faint. And people realize that there's something going on in heaven because he's privy to the information going on in, in, on a, in a different plane of existence. And the, the talus sort of falls off his, his head, and it looks like he's going to faint. And then there's some moments there where, where things are really dramatic. Uh, and then all of a sudden the color returns to his face and he says, uh, towards the end of the prayer, badin, to God who acquires his, his servants in judgment. Everyone's wondering what happened. It looks like things like all's okay now. The Rebbe's didn't talk typically. Um, there are many people, not only Rebbe's, but there, there are lots of individuals um, who don't talk at all, anything save prayers uh, or, or uh, Tehillim, Book of Psalms on the High Holidays. Um, certainly, at, everyone's encouraged not to speak idle talk or, or small talk. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a serious time, the holidays. So when the holidays were over, the, his Hasidim asked him, what, what exactly happened? And he said, this is, let me tell you what, what, what happened exactly. He says, I was in heaven. And I see that the opposing angel is coming to God because it's a day of judgment. And he has with him a big sack of misdeeds. He's schlepping along with him a big sack of misdeeds of the Jewish people from the preceding year. And he says it was very frightening. Um, but then the, the, uh, the opposing angel saw that there was a sin that just happened and he wanted to add it to the pile. So he ran off and he left his sack of, uh, of, uh, of these sins sitting on the floor and I wanted to see what's going on. So I open it up and I see there's some serious infractions there. He says, but I look at one and then I, as, as the more I look at it, the more I realize that uh, within context, it's not such a big sin. Why? He says, first of all, if you look at the Jewish population there as opposed to the other population that they lived around, they were a lot better off in terms of morality, in terms of, in terms in every what way, they were better, they were better off. He says, and, and more importantly, they were so destitute and, and they lived under such conditions that if a person is going to do something, looking for a little pleasure, here, a little pleasure there, because um, it, it, it's, you have to understand how much pressure they're under. You, you have to look at everything within context. So he says, when, when, when I was thinking this, all of a sudden, um, the, the, this paper with the sin melted in my hand. And he says, that's what happened. One after the next, I look at this. Oh, Yankel, he, uh, this woman, she, she's a widow. This guy, he's, 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 he's struggling for Parnassah, for, for a livelihood. All this, whenever I, I have these thoughts, all of a sudden, these, these, um, these sins melt in my hand, and I'm left with almost or, or practically nothing in the sack. All of a sudden, the, um, the, the opposing angel comes back and he sees that his whole bag, his whole bag, all of a sudden, he's not left with much. He says, what's going on here? Who did this? And then he sees me and he's, ah, you're the thief here. You're a ganeth. You're the thief. You have to pay me back 
all those sins that you stole from me. So the Bartich of Rabbi says, he says, I don't have anything to give you. So the, uh, the opposing angel, who also happens to be a Talmud Chacham, he's an angel, he knows the Torah, he's, not, he's no slouch. He says, it says in the Torah that if you steal and you have nothing to pay, then he sell you as a slave. So now you're my slave, I'm going to look for a purchaser for you. So he go, he's going around heaven and he says, anyone want to buy the uh, Bartich of Rebbe? And no one else wants to buy the Bardich of Rebbe. The angels, uh, parenthetical note, by the way, in the laws of servants uh, in the Torah, that when you, if someone owns a servant, uh, it's highly regulated. Uh, you have to feed him before you feed yourself. You can't injure him. You have to basically, at some point, the Talmud notes, he says, who's the master and who's the servant here? Because you have, it's so highly regulated that, um, that uh, this, this kind of servitude. But in any event, um, the, uh, no one wants to purchase the Bardich of a Rebbe, and finally, God, he hears a voice, and it's from God himself, and he says, I want to purchase him, I want him. I want to purchase Rebbe Levi Yitzchak Bardich, and that's where he says, of, he says, that's when I said, L'Kaina Avad of Badin, that's what I heard in heaven. God said, I want to purchase my servant for the, in judgment. And so, my dear friends, before we spoke about the, uh, the verse in the book of Nehemiah where, um, where, where Ezra the scribe and Nehemiah the governor are telling everyone in Rosh Hashanah when everyone's feeling this tremendous guilt, everyone go home, eat sweet food uh, and sweet drinks. Ki Hashem him because joy in God is our strength. And the reason why we're being joyous when we're in judgment is because who the judge is. The judge is our father, Avinu Malkeinu. And that is uh, really a pa- something very powerful that we're in judgment but we should be happy because in a sense the game is fixed because Hashem loves us and he will most certainly wish he will most certainly put us write us and seal us every single one of us um, and all good people around the world and I should mention it's a universal holiday not only a Jewish holiday as opposed to the other holidays the other holidays is uh, as Passover is a Jewish experience um, specifically in, in Sukkot, but Rosh Hashanah is the creation of the entirety of existence, the entire universe. So all people, the entire world, is written in a book of happiness um, and judgment, uh, uh, happiness and life and only good things.